Hi, I'm Ellen Ginsberg and I'm the president of Congregation Beth Shalom. Thank you for joining me for this week's Take Home Torah. I signed up for this Take Home Torah many months ago because this week's portion, Parsha Bo, is very special to me. This is the portion my daughter read at her bat mitzvah one year ago. What I didn't realize at the time I signed up was that this would also be the week of the inauguration. As someone who has worked in government and politics, including a presidential campaign, I'm especially excited to be sharing my thoughts with you at this moment. Bo is an action-packed portion. The last three plagues are visited upon the Egyptians, locusts, darkness, and the slaying of the firstborn. The Israelites prepare to leave Egypt after more than 400 years in slavery. It's perhaps one of the best known stories as we not only recall these events during this Parsha, but we repeat this story during Pesach each year. As I reread Bo in preparation for this Devar Torah, I was struck by the parallels between where the Israelites found themselves on the brink of exodus from Egypt and where we find ourselves today. A heart-hardened leader who showed no empathy, an unimaginable plague that devastated a nation, it all sounds a little too familiar. But today I wanna to focus on a series of commandments that we receive in this Parsha. Some think the first commandments received were the Big Ten that came on the two tablets at Sinai. But the first commandments given by God are right here and they are particularly relevant for us today in this moment. These com commandments have a theme, we must remember. In Exodus chapter 13, verse three, we are given the general directive to remember. Quote, and Moses said to the people, remember this, on which you went free from Egypt, the house of bondage, how the Lord freed you from it with a mighty hand, end quote. A few verses later, God prescribes a ritual for remembrance. Quote, for seven days you shall eat unleavened cakes, and on the seventh day there is a festival for the Lord, end quote. And then an instruction to remember by educating our children. Quote, and you shall tell your son on that day, saying, because of this, the Lord did this for me when I went out of Egypt, end quote. Simply put, it's not enough to remember the past with words. Rather, we remember with actions. The fact is, we forget too often. Sometimes it's because a person or a condition that we per perceive as a threat goes away. Sometimes it's because our personal circumstances change. And sometimes it's because we are imbued with privilege that allows us to forget. But forgetting is dangerous. As the saying goes, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. As many of you know, I have been active in gun violence prevention work for many years. I'm part of a group that meets monthly to advocate for common sense gun laws that keep guns out of the hands of people who pose a danger to themselves or others. There's a cycle that I've seen time and again a shooting will take place, a tragedy, something that rocks the nation. In the immediate aftermath, we see a huge spike in attendance at our meetings. Lots of new people who are outraged and who wanna take action. The next month, we have a good turnout, but not quite as many people show up. The month after that, even fewer. People's attention turns elsewhere. The sense of urgency they initially felt is gone. In short, they forget the feeling that motivated them to show up in the first place. At this moment, I fear we are in danger of forgetting again. This week, the voice of Nina Simone singing Feeling Good kept going through my head. I'll spare you from my singing, but the verse on repeat is this. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life. It was a new day for the Israelites too. The first commandment given to the Israelites in this Parsha and Parsha Bo, the first commandment ever given, says, quote, this month shall be unto you the first of the months, end quote. While many of us think that the first month of the Jewish year coincides with Rosh Hashanah, it's actually the month of Nisan, which is when we celebrate Pesach, that the Jewish calendar starts. But that's a subject for another Devar Torah. I just want to pause here for a moment to say that, yes, I am a Democrat, and yes, I am very happy that the Trump presidency is over. 
When I think about a new dawn and a new day, I am thinking about a new administration. That said, this Devar Torah is not intended to be political. Every one of us has gone through a traumatic experience in the last year. Two weeks ago, we all watched in horror as armed extremists stormed the Capitol in an attempted coup. For nearly a year, we have all lived with the fear, anxiety, and sadness of the pandemic. I think that all of us are excited about the idea of a new dawn and a new day in one way or another. But at this moment, this is where the commandments of Bo, the commandments to remember, are critical. There are things right now that we all want to forget, to permanently erase from our memories. So much we want to put behind us and never revisit. But things don't change because we forget. They change because we remember. Amanda Gorman, the Youth Poet Laureate speaking at this week's inauguration, put it this way in her powerful poem, The Hill We Climb. Quote, being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it, end quote. We cannot repair a broken past without a commitment to remembering what that past entailed. Going back to Bo, it's not just that we remember, but how we remember. We don't need to live in the past or be defined by it, but finding the tactile, tangible ways to remember, the way God instructs us to do in our remembrance of the Exodus is key. For the Israelites, for us, the method of remembrance evolved ritual and the senses of taste, smell, and feel that come with eating unleavened bread. So how do we today remember in a meaningful way? At the beginning of this Devar Torah, I told you that Parsha Bo is what my daughter read at her bat mitzvah last year. She had some good thoughts on the subject of how we remember. To quote my daughter, I hope everyone leaves here thinking, how can I be an activist? What do I believe in? And what can I do to change the world? So as we welcome Shabbat and take time for reflection, this is what I ask of you. Find a way to make the past something that informs your future in a meaningful way. Find a way to turn the pain, anxiety, fear, or anger that you may have felt over the past years into purpose. Don't forget what has come before. Don't relegate it to a story stripped of feeling. Make the memory real. Make the memory tangible. Make the memory a catalyst for positive change. Shabbat Shalom.